Alright, so I got a huge haul of electronics here from Flywoo. So I got some motors, ESC's flight controllers, stacks, uh, video transmitters, etc. So just go through all these one by one. All, all the products here will be linked down in the description. So if you want to know where to get them, just check down in the description. And let's see what we got here. So uh, look at this one first. What we got? This is a 30 by 30 stack. The Goku F7. So it's a 722 and a 506S ESC. So this uh, is the EC part here. 32 bits. Um, Beal Heli S. Oh, I'm sorry, Beal Heli 32. And it's 50 amps. 2 to 6 S. So this will do RPM filtering. I believe it has the latest firmware on here. Current sensor and telemetry. It will burst to 55 amps, I believe, for 10 seconds. And we've got some LEDs here in the corners. So obviously those will light up uh, as your uh, motor output changes. I'm not exactly sure how they're programmed, but it doesn't look like they're programmed through Betaflight OSD. Very big pads here for your battery connection. And then obviously you can stick your capacitor through there as well. We'll take a look at that here in a second. Got your current shunt here on the bottom. And I don't know who makes these FETs, but uh, they're pretty big. So this looks like this uh, should be able to handle plenty of power. Uh, through holes here on the bottom and the top, so you can solder on e either side for the motor wires. You have a plug here for your to your flight controller if you want to connect that way, or you have solder pads here, but they're not silk screens, so you'll have to refer to their. Uh, probably their on, uh, online um, instruction manual or diagram. Let me just see if there might be one in the bottom of this case here. And here is the flight controller. It's an F7 flight controller. Pretty good. So yeah, I'd refer you to the wiring diagram. Again, uh, if it's available, I'll put it up here on the screen. But this is all pretty standard, pretty straightforward. This is an F7, so it's going to have, I think, at least six UARTs. You can see all the UARTs here on the right. It's like TX1, RX1, 2, 3, 4. You have a uh, connection for your compass if you need it. And down here are solder pads for your motor connections. I see, I see motor 1, 2, 3, 4, current sensor. So that you could do direct solder from the flight controller to the ESC if you want to go that route. But again, their plug is available if you want to use that. So some people would prefer direct soldering. You could do that. So it's, that's nice. It gives you two choices. Get the boot button here, USB port over here, and down here you have your TX5 video out, 9 volts and ground for you. This is, I think, going to be all for your um, video transmitter here. Okay, so over here you uh, you got ground, 5 volts, C1C2. I think this is going to be for two different camera connections. This is does support this uh, flight controller does support dual cameras. Okay, so on the bottom of the board here you can see that all the Connection points are also silk screen here as well, so you can uh, solder to the bottom or to the top, your choice. This version here has the MPU 6000 gyro, so um, there's another version that has the uh, ICM gyro, and I think that you could switch between the two. This one only has the MPU 6000 gyro, and the one with the ICM gyro is sitting on a case in like some sort of vibration dampening material, and it's soldered directly to these pads here. But this version that I have is only the MPU 6000 only. You have a 5 volt 2 amp and a 9 volt 2 amp regulator here on the bottom. I'm not sure which one's which. And you have a Betaflight OSD and you have a chip for black box data. And somewhere in here is a barometer. I'm not exactly sure which chip it is. I think it's that one right there. But yeah, this one also has a barometer if you want to use that. Oh, and one more thing to note is that this flight controller does accept up to 8S voltage or 50 amps or 50 volts so if you want to direct uh, put 8s direct voltage into this it will be able to handle it okay so here is the rest of the stuff and yeah, there's instructions here at the bottom of the box so we got our capacitor here this is a 35 volt 470 microfarad capacitor you got your wiring loom from the flight controller to the esc and you got some so you got some dampening uh, mounting standoffs here. You have different screws. So you have different op mounting options included in uh, the package. That's nice. And this is the 
documentation, so it, I like that it comes with, uh, and it's in color. Okay, so it does show you uh, how to do the different dual cameras and also the VTX settings, all the, the, the complete wiring diagram, what everything is. Yes, yeah, so that FC is actually camera control. And then over here on the other side is going to be your um, IRC, Tramp, or Smart Audio. All of your UARTs over here and your receiver connections. Motor connections over here. And LED buzzer over here. So, it's all very well documented. So, glad that they're including this as a paper. You don't have to download it. Alright, so moving on, we have the F7, or the Goku F7 mini stack, so it's an F7, this is all 20 by 20 and then you have a uh, 40 or 406S ESC, and I think it's just 40 amps and it's up to 6S. So this is the 20 by 20, um, 32 bit 4 in 1 ESC, so that would be LA32, now we'll support RPM filter, and it has this like kind of fancy looking shiny um, metal thing here on the top here, but I don't think that really supports it or does anything other than just it's cosmetic. It's, I guess it's supposed to be heatsink, but I think all of the you know, all the FETs are on the bottom here. So along with all your capacitors and your current sensor, so it does support EAC telemetry. This one does have a connector here and also has solder pads if you want to go that route as well. Very nice. Um, Connections here for your motor wires on the side, easily accessible on both sides and through holes. These are M3 holes, I believe, but they ha should have uh, grommets there to convert to M2. And very big solder pads on the top and bottom, along with these through holes for the capacitor, if you want to use those. So, pretty nice. That's 40 amps. I think it bursts to 50. And it has a current sensor and EAC telemetry, of, of course, that will support RPM filters. So, pretty nice nice package here, very thin uh, 20 by 20 board. Okay, here's a look at the F7 flight controller, also 20 by 20, M3 holes, and I believe this is the final production version of the flight controller that I previewed a while back. So I'll link that video down in the description here. Yeah, this one looks like it has the 5 volt and 9 volt regulators as before. Um, I think this one here is the MPU 6000 version. It's the one with the ICM gyro is going to have a thing on a box on the top here, which this one doesn't. So yeah, I'll refer you to that video. Um, uh, yeah, I can't really read any of the solder patches, but they're probably going to have instructions here on the bottom of the box as well. Let's see here. Okay, so this one does not have the wiring diagram, so we're probably going to have it online. Get your wiring loom from your uh, flight controller to your ESC here, and you have a capacitor. It is 35 volts, 470 microfarad, and this is all of your mounting hardware, your spacers, grommets, rubber grommets, M3 and M2 screws, and O-rings, so all kinds of stuff here. So you can mount this on a variety of different frames, so pretty good package. Okay, so I better weigh these things because someone's going to ask me. Um, this is the 20 by 20 4 in 1 EC, weighs 8 grams. This is the F7 20 by 20 flight controller, 5.3 grams. This is the 30 by 30 4 in 1 EC, coming in at 11.4 grams. And this is this F7 Goku flight controller, 30 by 30, 7.7 .7 grams. Okay, so moving on, we have some whoop components here. So we have a Goku GN 413S stack, all-in-one uh, plus the VTX, and then we have the, I guess this is the VTX that's in here as well, the VTX 625. So let's just look at the, take a look at the VTX first. This is a kind of a unique design that they've got here for this VTX. So you got your typical triangle VTX that you see a lot of out there, but this is more versatile because as you can see the way they've designed these holes and the way that uh, you can see the board is basically perforated here so you can cut these points off is you can use this uh, as a tri typical triangle whoop style VTX or you can cut this holes off and then use this in a 20 by 20 fashion where you can cut off those holes and use just the inside holes here for 
a 16 by 16 mount. And so they put all the electronics here basically on what is a 16 by 16 type of mount, but I'll, uh, I'll allow you these other parts here that you can use or take off to you mount in different types of situations. So this is a really nicely designed and very versatile video transmitter. Obviously, I don't know how it performs, but I do like the design concept here. Anyway, so taking a closer look at the board itself, you got your button here for changing bands, channel, and power. You have a micro fill connector. Obviously, they've gone with that route to keep it light and small for 16 by 16 minimum size. I mean, obviously, if you put an MFCX on here, it's going to increase the weight and everything. So that's why they went that route. You have some solder pads here on this side, which don't have any labels. I think they're, yeah, they're labeled on the other side here. So you got. 5 volts ground RX for your smart audio uh, video, and you have an LED pad there. It's interesting. So it looks like, yeah, you have some LEDs here. You have an LED right there, one right there, one right there, and right there. So it looks like that's a pro, what you would call a programmable LED um, pad there. So you should be able to control that in beta flight. And you have four LEDs here on this video transmitter. So uh, instead of having a separate LED board somewhere in your build, you, you, it's on the video transmitter itself and it should keep the weight down, so that's pretty nice, obviously. We'll see what that looks like later. Um, let's see how much this thing weighs. It's coming in at 1.7 grams, pretty light. I think on the website it was like 1.3 grams, so it's all, maybe uh, they're using that weight if, it's, if you take off some of the corners. But yeah, that's... Uh, it's uh, pretty light, and here is the rest of the stuff in the package. Got your grommets here. Uh, that's going to be for the big holes on the outside, uh, probably for 20 by 20. Yeah, 20 by 20 or the whip style mounting, and that'll turn into M2 holes. Got your whip antenna, micro FL connector uh, for the antenna, and then you have some bare wire here, just all black. All right, so moving on, we got the all-in-one whoop stack here. And this has the the video transmitter. Yeah, this has the video transmitter in here as well. Uh, so you, all of these parts here, you can buy individually, or you can buy them as stacks. So I'll list them all the various parts down in the description. We got a really long XT30. I like the black XT30s, by the way. And uh, what is what gauge wire is this? So this is 18 gauge wire. So that should be good enough for uh, most uh, toothpick class uh, micros. Um, and we have uh, we got your mounting grommets in here, some nuts. You got your um, plugs here for if you want to actually use motor plugs. And they have the straight through and also. It looks like the right, yeah, the right angled ones are included. So if you want to do a right angle um, motor plug or a vertical motor plug, they give you both options. So pretty nice. Uh, M2 screws. Uh, you got your capacitor on here, which you probably, yeah, you can probably put that on the board itself. 220 microfarad, 25 volts. You got your whip antenna for the VTX. It's a pretty nice package, and this is the we just saw this the video transmitter. And then here is the actual whip board. So you can see you got some big M3 holes for the rubber grommets to turn them into M2 holes. Uh, looks like you could probably cut off, take off these edges here if you would prefer the half circle versus the complete circle. But I think most people are preferring the full circle now because it uh, keeps the board more secure, especially in crashes. This is a totally different design that I've seen from other boards out there. So you have like a sort of a bigger board in terms of area, a little bit wider, of course. And so the pads are more accessible. So you have your motor uh, pads here for direct soldering, or you can go the interior ones there for the plugs. If you want to use either the vertical or the horizontal plugs, it's pretty nice. But this one has the USB coming out of the bottom instead of out of the sides. So that's a little bit different. Um, so if you guys don't like the uh, vertical USB port uh, and prefer the newer style with the USB ports coming horizontally out of the side here, then yeah, this one probably won't work for you. I think a lot of the newer ones are doing the horizontal ones, so maybe they'll, they'll have a newer version down the road with the horizontal one. I'm not exactly sure why they went with the vertical, but yeah, 
Uh, for some of you that prefer the vertical, then yes, this is going to be pretty nice. Big solder pads for all of your connections here. You got your video in here on this side. Camera connection over there, 5 volts. And let's see over here. Looks like you got your receiver connections here. S bus, inverted S bus, or inverted RX1, 5 volts in ground. And then over here you got your um, buzzer pad, 5 volts and LED. And then over here you got your video out, TX2, so this is smart audio video transmitter stuff over here. So, pretty typical. Uh, MPU 6000 on this one, yeah, let's see here. Yes, MPU 6000 gyro, you get your beta flood OC. This is an F4, and this does use a unique uh, flyview target. And it does look like this also has a uh, black box chip here. Well, a lot of these book boards don't have a black box chip for black box data recording, so that's pretty nice. And also has 3.3 .3 volts here. I think this still does only have two UARTs, so you have uh, two full UARTs. Got your boot button here, and then you have four LEDs here on each side. You can see right there. And those are uh, programmable in beta flight, as well as you have an LED pad if you want to add external LEDs as well. So you can just go crazy with the lights if you want to on this one. Pretty big solder pads here for your um, battery connection, as well as through holes for your capacitor there. And then pretty much on the bottom, it's all just the FETs and the USB port. You can, of course, put the motor plugs either on the bottom or on the top, or solder to the bottom or the top. So, pretty good. And then you have a little shunt here for the current sensor. Okay, so here's the uh, weight of this whoop board. We're coming in at 5.8 grams. Okay, so this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to cut this short here. This is going to be part one, and then uh, to give you a little preview for part two of this giant haul, got some motors. We got some of these Robo motors here, RB22.5 to 6.5. Some weird numbering schemes, and we have a Robo 1507-2900. I'll show you that in the next video, and a Robo RB1507-4150. And we got this guy here, uh, I think it's called the XBOT 3. Yeah, this one has some um, 1202 and a half motors at 5800 kV. Three inch uh, toothpick style. Uh, well, that'll be in the, in the next video. So stay tuned for part two. This video is way too long. Talk to you guys in the next one.